let's fix this iPhone 15 Pro Max with the cracked screen. We got to get it heated up first, but to do that, we're going to power it down. And then we are going to grab out our P2 or star bit screwdriver and unscrew the two screws from the bottom. I'll leave a link in the description of all the tools you should use and where you can get the screen, both from Apple and Aftermarket. And I also wanted to talk to you about my other videos. Please check out my other videos. I do have some fun ones that aren't as educational, but they are educational in a fun way. Normally I put it on the heating pad for about 10 minutes on 80 degrees Celsius. While we wait for this to heat up, I want to introduce you to today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Cell Helmet, and this is their wireless charger, 15 watt, and the wireless charging stand. Check it out on my description below. Thanks, Cell Helmet, for the great charger. After you heat up the screen, you're gonna wanna grab a metal pry tool in a suction cup. Sometimes the screen is so cracked, the suction cup won't even work, so you'll just have to pry it with the plastic, uh, metal pry tool. Um, so you'll get a lift on it and you want to use a plastic pry tool to pry around the edges of it because you don't want to stick the tool in too far and break, break something, short something out or uh, rip a cable inside. So we'll uh, put some alcohol down to loosen the adhesive. Just a reminder, you would want it to be like too hot to touch. I would just say that it's if it's not hot enough, it's just... Uh, gonna be really hard for you to take off like prying it off is really hard and i have it sped up in the video here so you guys can see me pry it off but it is um something you want to take your time on especially use a lot of heat use a heat gun heating pad and you could even use a hair dryer if you wanted to look like the phone turned on while i was working on it here so um, it looks like it's still intact and working as I pry it off, which is pretty great. Um, it, there are people that re-glass the LCDs, and I don't know how to do that at all, unfortunately, but uh, for now, we do just the full screen replacement. Right here up on the top is giving me a hard time coming off, but you open it up from the right to the left, just like so, and then there's going to be five Y triple zero screws you're going to want to remove all these to remove the bracket holding down the battery connection and the screen and proximity sensor connection that we will remove thank you for watching my video if you find this guide helpful please leave me a super thanks it'd be much appreciated i work really hard on these videos to provide you guys and i don't get paid very much to work on all this it's a lot of work all right, next you're gonna wanna disconnect the battery, the screen, the proximity sensor with a plastic spudger, the flat end, and disconnect the battery in red, and then the screen in blue here, just like this. This is exactly where you would wanna pry it at. And then for the proximity sensor, you're gonna tilt this, um, the spudger a different direction here and uh, just pop it off just like so. And then you can fully remove the screen. Screens removed, you'll grab a PH000 screwdriver, unscrew the light sensor connected to the proximity sensor. I'm not quite sure if this thing breaks when you take it off, if you'll lose Face ID forever like most of the other phones. Um, I did try to test that, and it did seem like that it would be the case, but um, it turned the phone's loss prevention on when I was trying to test it, so I just stopped messing with it, and I didn't want to screw up the guy's settings on his phone by putting on a part that may need to work for Face ID. So if you guys do know the answer to this question, I will pin your comment on the bottom of this uh, guide here and make sure everyone knows if this part breaks, Face ID will no longer work. To properly remove the proximity sensor, you'll want to use a heating pad and then also plastic pry tools to uh, pry it off with uh, some alcohol as well and fine pointed tweezers to work your way around the light sensor so then you can just take it off just like that. This screen is an aftermarket screen. Uh, you'll get a screen message if you don't transfer the IC. The part is paired to the motherboard. Um, it's a fully functional screen so I still use it. But if you want to not get the message, you can go to Apple's website and buy the screen. 
it will get programmed to your serial number. You'll they'll need some information, possibly like your IMEI or serial number of your device. And then you will be able to get an OEM screen without the message. We'll connect the proximity sensor and then we'll connect the screen and the battery. And we'll give this thing a test before we screw everything together and make sure the proximity sensor is working properly, make a test phone call, make sure face ID is working, make sure um, the camera isn't damaged at all when I pry it off the screen. And then I also like to check if it's charging and everything else. I normally um, test it first and then I'll screw it all together. I'm going to skip out on the videos testing here, but I'll show you the screen message that pops up in their settings. It's not too intrusive, so it's still worth it. All right, so we'll open up the screen, hang on to it. Don't drop it and put it on the table. You could rip off the cables or also you could uh, damage the FPC connectors on the board if the screen pops off on its own. All right, so we'll grab our bracket and then it's our Y000 screwdriver to screw in the uh, uh, bracket. And then we will uh, uh, put our adhesive down and call it good. With iOS 18, now you can repair the parts to your phone. So if you buy an OEM part that's not iCloud locked, then you'll be able to um, not have the screen message as well. I wanted to point that out. After we get this on, we will screw it all down. I'll use some adhesive. I recommend making sure you use the pre-cut adhesive that comes with the screen. For some reason, my screen didn't have some, so I had to grab some liquid adhesive and put it all around the edges and then clamp it afterwards before I could mark it ready for pickup. I'm not quite sure if the liquid adhesive makes it as water resistant as the pre-cut adhesive. I would like to put that to the test in another video. So please subscribe to my channel to watch out for this video where I'll check the waterproofing of my repairs. All right. Well, anyways, I don't have the vacuum sealing machine, so and it's a bit expensive for what it's used for. I feel like that we already have been trained that wa uh, water doesn't belong in phones. All right, well, this is the part of the video. I speed it up and like and subscribe, everyone. Thanks for watching.